Beneath the dunes of Western Sahara, on the northwest coast of Africa, is the lifeblood of the region, phosphate rock. This rock is prized for its phosphorus, a key ingredient in fertilizer essential for crops to flourish. Western Sahara is a place not on many people's radar, but exports from its vast reserve reaches all corners of the globe, including Canada. Among its biggest customers are Canadian fertilizer companies Potash Corp and Agrium. Routine business, seemingly, but in Western Sahara, it's a political landmine. Western Sahara is the last remaining colony in Africa, according to the UN, and companies that import this phosphate rock from its Fosboukra mine, owned by Morocco, have gotten some flack over what some argue is against international law. Each year, millions of tons of this phosphate rock are extracted from the mine, then put on the world's largest conveyor belt. This belt stretches across Western Sahara, more than 100 kilometers, and out into the ocean and onto a port from where ships take the rock to Canada, the U.S., and as far as India and Brazil. But many natives of Western Sahara, called Saharawis, say they're not reaping the full benefits of this international business. What's more, Many say they are outnumbered in their own land as Moroccans moved in, enticed by tax breaks and other incentives from the Moroccan government. Human rights groups say Saharawis have been the victims of forced disappearances and torture. Salmani Mohammed says it's hard to watch his homeland's natural resources be exploited while his fellow Saharawis are marginalized. He's part of a group seeking the protection of these resources and is calling for foreign companies to stop their involvement. <laughs> Western Sahara has been under Moroccan rule since 1976. After a violent conflict between Morocco and the separatist group Polisario Front, the UN brokered a ceasefire in 1991. The UN also planned to hold a referendum to allow the Saharawis to decide whether to become independent or integrate with Morocco. Decades later, the vote has yet to be held, and the political process is at a standstill. Potash Corp has already got some flack. Four Swedish sovereign wealth funds and a Norwegian sovereign wealth fund have divested their stake in Potash Corp over these practices. And a Canadian socially responsible fund has also pressed both Potash Corp and Agrium for clarification of what they do in that territory. But both companies say they are in compliance with international law and continue to support a UN solution. They also cite the hefty investments that the Moroccan-owned mining company, OCP, has made in Western Sahara and the economic and social benefits for the region's people. But sometimes, frustration spurs protesters to take to the streets in the capital Layoun. In May, they waved Polisario flags, an act banned by the Moroccan government, and flashed peace signs to signal their support for independence. The protests ended after nightfall, but after rocks were thrown, a car was smashed and both government and protesters traded accusations of violence. Eric Hagen of Norway-based Western Sahara Resource Watch says involvement by foreign firms give Morocco less incentive to work with the UN and the international community to resolve the dispute. The, the Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General, has a special envoy trying to mediate between the parties. And in that difficult, difficult negotiation process, Morocco earns money from a company from Canada for goods on occupied land. Now, why would Morocco enter into any serious peace talks if they earn money from that territory?